Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to replace your water pump and thermostat on this E46 M3. So this particular M3 is a 2006 M3 competition pack. It's got about 100,000 miles and it's leaking a lot of coolant, mainly from like the thermostat housing seal as well as the water pump seal. So we'll begin this DIY by pulling off all these push pin tabs so we can remove the air duct and then we can remove the air box afterwards. But since we are going to be replacing the water pump and the thermostat, we are going to have to also drain all the coolant out. Uh, while we're at it, we're also going to replace the upper and lower radiator hoses and just, you know, get the whole cooling system back to how it should be. So here's the air cowl getting pulled off. Now with the cowl out of the way, we can get off these push pins for the actual fan shroud itself. There's one on the top that actually attaches both of the side parts of the shrouds. So there's this whole shroud setup is like a three piece. There's a, these two covers that are on each side of the fan shroud itself. And then you have the main fan shroud, which attaches to the radiator itself. So this push pin tab is just like every other one. You get off the middle section and then you can pull out the actual tab itself. Now with the top one out of the way, we're going to do the passenger side first. You can see there's one more right in the bottom section right there. And it's got a little indent which it sits inside. I'm just using these wire cutters or dikes, whatever you want to call them. And it just makes it easier for me to do it this way. Most of the other trim tools will make it a little bit difficult um, just because of the angle that it's at. Now with the tab out of the way, you see you can just lift that up. Um, there's this other tab that sits inside of a groove on the actual shroud itself, but there's no fasteners on it. Now this is the other side where the upper radiator hose. This side is a little bit trickier because the upper radiator hose goes through a section on this shroud itself. So you can't really remove this section without pulling out the upper radiator hose. A lot of people like to cut out a small little slit on the actual shroud itself. That way whenever you pull off the tabs, you can slide it out without having to remove the upper radiator hose. We are going to be removing the upper radiator hose in, the, in a little bit here, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, you can also make it a little bit easier and get more space if you remove the air box, which we'll be doing that later on as well. So once you have that tab out, there's only one in there just like the other side, and it also has uh, another tab that sits inside of a, a little section, so you just pull it up, and now you can move it out of the way. Now we're going to remove all the connectors. So you have uh, the sensor on the top that we're going to pull off first. Just push the tab in and pull it off. Now you have for the auxiliary fan that's in the front. You don't have to disconnect it. You can just pull out the whole connector uh, with the wiring right off of the shroud itself. There's a little enclosure right there. Just lift it straight up. Once you lift it up, you can see the wires that go through the bottom. So just make sure you slide it out of the enclosure and then just tuck everything away. Now we're also going to remove this lower uh, the wiring connector for the lower uh, aux fan switch as well. So we're just going to pull that off. That one has a little metal clip. You just push that in and lift up the connector. Now here is a T25 screw. This holds the top uh, part of the shroud to the radiator. It also holds the radiator to the rest of the whole assembly for the condenser as well. So this one's going to be the longest screw of them all. So you can see how long it is. The rest of the screws that we're going to remove for the shroud are quite a bit shorter. So this shroud is a little bit different than most of the other E46s uh, just because it's got a bolt on the top and as well as the bottom and you saw the side pieces. But before we go on with the rest of that we're going to pull off this fan. So you need a fan clutch tool which is uh, I believe a size 32 millimeter open end wrench but it has to be skinny. And I like to use this pry bar method just because it's easier. So the pry bar you want to stick it in between one of the bolts and the actual section for the fan clutch itself and then you know you just hold that. You use the pry bar to hold it against the water pump so the water pump doesn't move. And while you're prying on it, you're actually prying against the fan a little bit too, so it just makes it easier for it to pop off. And make sure that you guys remember this is a left hand thread, so you do have to turn it clockwise to loosen and counterclockwise to tighten. Now with the fan loosened up and then pulled off, now we can continue taking off the rest of the fan shroud. There's another bolt right here, which you can see it's a T25. This on the passenger side underneath the upper radiator hose. And it is kind of pointed towards the headlight. So it does make it a little bit easier if you pull off the air box, which I did do later on, but you don't really have to do that. Now with that top screw removed, we're underneath the car. Uh, this is still on the driver's side. You can see there's another bolt that's holding that shroud in. So this is also a T25 bolt. There's one on each side. So you can use a little extension to get in there a little bit easier. Pull that one off. 
make sure you don't pull off the oil cooler shroud. You're just trying to get out the fan shroud so you can remove the entire fan. As you can see, this car was actually missing the under tray. If you do have that, you might have to pull that off first. We can pull the fan out first. Uh, this just this is easier to just pull the fan out. There is enough space where you can pull the fan out without removing the rest of the shroud. That way you can manipulate the shroud afterwards, forward and backwards, to get out from around the radiator hoses. So just be careful with the fan. You don't want to break any of the blades. So at this point, if you are going to be removing this upper radiator hose to replace, this is where you would kind of have to remove this air box just so that the upper radiator hose can be pulled off all the way. Alright, so remove the air box first. We're going to disconnect the MAP sensor. Uh, just got two tabs on each side. Then you have this hose clamp. Uh, you can use a flathead screwdriver or a 6 millimeter socket. Loosen that up really well. That way you can actually pull it off of the intake boot. Now on this car, on the M3s, they have the headlight ballast for the xenon lights uh, right on top of the air box to the side of it. So we're going to remove both of the connectors first. They also have just the tabs on the connectors. Make sure you're squeezing the tabs properly when you pull them off. Then you can remove this cover. It just lifts right up. There's about four tabs on there, but there's nothing you have to remove. You just have to lift up on it. Now this particular ballast is broken. As you can see, all the tabs are broken. So we're going to remove the 10 millimeter bolt that attaches to the uh, air box as well, but it also has attachment for the headlight ballast bracket. So that 10 millimeter bolt on the bottom for the air box is the same one for the bracket. Then you also have a 10 millimeter nut on the top of the ballast, and that's also for the bracket right there. So since this ballast, the tabs are broken, it's a little bit easier to just move out of the way, and then I can pull off that 10 millimeter nut. Now as far as the air box goes, we're going to pull it off from the intake boot. Now there's also the actual cold air intake part. Alright, so now we can have more space to play around with the other side shroud. So I moved that out of the way and pulled out the main fan shroud right off the radiator. But just be careful, you can see all the tabs uh, that go around the radiator hoses. So just be careful when you're pulling all those off so that you don't damage anything else. Now with all this out of the way, we're going to pull off the upper radiator hose. Make sure both of the metal tabs are lifted up, that way you can actually pull it out. It does make it easier sometimes to even remove the entire metal part, um, but you can see right here I'm just using my, using my wrist to lightly tap on the upper part of that hose so I can pull off of the radiator. If you try to just do brute strength with this, sometimes you end up actually damaging the radiator itself. You might crack it or you might break it. It's kind of better to do a little bit of an uh, impact, that way it pulls off, it loosens up any of the uh, crud that's you know just pretty much sealing it. Because there's two o-rings inside and that's usually what the seal is. But you can see I've loosened it up quite a bit and now I can actually get some separation when I'm pulling it off. The other part goes to the expansion tank. This hose also does break quite often, uh, it's like a hard plastic hose, so it would be a good idea to change this if you're already here. Now you can see how I'm getting the separation, so I'm just going to keep pulling it and bam came right off. You can also use a silicon spray or even some kind of white lithium grease spray or anything like that to help you pull off the hose. Um, just let it sit in there a little bit. For that you do want to remove those metal tabs all the way. That way the silicon spray uh, can actually get into the actual hose itself. Now the other part of this upper radiator hose is just held in with a hose clamp. You can use a 6 millimeter socket or a short uh, flathead screwdriver depending on the orientation of your clamp. You do want to loosen this quite a bit because they do you know, stretch out a little bit around the edges of the clamp. Then it's just going to be harder for you to pull it off. So loosen up enough and then you can just slide the hose clamp all the way off. And then you can just pull off the hose. This part can get a little bit tricky as well depending on how long that hose has been on there. If it's ever been removed or whatnot. So I'm just going to twist it around. Um, you can even stick like a screwdriver or something in there. Just be careful not to scratch any of the surfaces that you have to reuse. Now I'm going to loosen the 10 millimeter bolts that hold the water pump pulley to the water pump. Since we are going to be replacing this water pump, uh, we are going to have to remove the pulley before we can actually, um, you know, take off the water pump. And this, t this, at this point, it's a lot easier to take off those bolts or at least loosen them uh, since the belt is still tensioning that pulley. Otherwise, once you pull off the belt, that's going to be a little bit more difficult to get those bolts off without having anything tensioning the pulley. 
Now we're going to actually pull off the belt itself. So we're going to take off this cover off of this tensioner. This tensioner is a hydraulic tensioner, which is a little bit different than the mechanical ones. The mechanical ones, you're going to just have a 16 millimeter socket that you have to put over the tensioner itself. Um, there's a little section on the tensioner that has that. On the hydraulic ones, you just have to use the pulley. So the pulley has a bolt that's in the middle. It's going to be an 8 millimeter hex bolt. And we're going to just put a socket in there, turn it uh, clockwise, and that should release the tension for the tensioner. Uh, only thing with the hydraulic tensioner is sometimes when you are releasing that tension using that bolt, uh, sometimes people end up stripping the bolt. Uh, main reason they do that is they either use the wrong size socket or just the tensioner is stuck and you can't really get enough leverage on it to pull it off. But for us, it didn't strip, so we were able to just put that 8mm hex socket in onto the bolt for the tensioner pulley and just turn it clockwise and we can pull the belt off. So now that you pull the belt off, you just want to slide it off the tensioner and slide it off the idler pulley as well. And then you can actually release the tension and you should be good to take the belt off. You don't have to remove the belt all the way if you don't want to. Uh, for us, I did want to do that just because there's going to be a lot of coolant spilling everywhere and you don't want to just have that you know, belt just soaking it in all that coolant. Uh, also for us, the AC belt was torn, so this is a good time to check and replace the belts. So I'm going to release the tension on the AC belt, which actually has a mechanical tensioner on this side. So we're just going to use that 16 millimeter socket, release the tension, pull off the AC belt as well. This is also a good time to replace any other pulleys or tensioners uh, since you already have the belts off and you have a little bit more access without the fan shroud there. So if depending on, you know, if there any of them are making noise, it's a good time to do it. As you can see, the condition of this belt is really bad. There's also chunks missing. Um, it's very dried out. I'm pretty sure the drive belt itself has been replaced before, but in order to replace the drive belt, you do have to remove the AC belt first. All right, now we're going to loosen the hose clamp for the lower radiator hose. Uh, like I said before, you can use a 6mm socket or a short flathead screwdriver. Now you do want some kind of drain pan or something underneath the area that way whenever you pull off the lower radiator hose it, the coolant has somewhere to go uh, and you do not want to reuse any of this coolant um, a lot of people try to reduce coolant by straining and stuff which is really uh, it's not even worth it at that point the new coolant like I said you should always use BMW coolant if you have a BMW you can use like uh, different manufacturers Ro is an OEM manufacturer for it you can also just get like uh, Pentafrost um, even I think Peak just came out with a new formula recently that has BMW specific or for European vehicles and that should also work that one usually comes pre-diluted so if you get the concentrate make sure you're diluting it with 50 50 um, distilled water so half of it is the concentrate the other half is distilled water do not use tap water because it has all those minerals and stuff you want to use distilled water all right now I'm just gonna pry off this hose uh, it's really stuck on there I don't think it's ever been removed um, just you know get some separation now you can see the coolant starting to leak out now we're going to take off the lower radiator hose uh, off of the radiator side so we're going to lift up that metal tab right there and this one is usually more stuck on than the top one and you don't have as much access so you can use a pry bar uh, or you can just try to pull it off as much as you can if you do use a pry bar, make sure you're prying uh, in a safe spot. You don't want to crack any of the plastic parts or bend any of the metal parts too much. Um, so you can see when I get the pry bar, I make sure I'm going against a solid surface and I'm not putting much pressure. It might look like it's you know very a lot of pressure on it, but there's really not much at all. So you can see I'm prying on it from different areas. And you can see the hose actually starting to pull off. Um, but I'm also going to use my other arm to pull on the hose itself. That way we can get more separation and it will pull off a little bit easier. Now we can pull off this water pump pulley. If you loosen the bolts with the belt on, it should be pretty easy to pull them off. Just pull the pulley straight off. Now pry this harness tab off of this actual hook. Move it out of the way. 
Now there's three 10 millimeter bolts. When you pull these off, it should lift up this top section, which is the thermostat housing. Now you can lift that up a little bit, twist and turn it to pull it out all the way. So you're trying to do is get it off of this water pipe that has an O-ring attached to it, and you're also trying to get it off of the water pump itself. And the thermostat should just come out with it, but there's an O-ring right here. And there's the thermostat. Now we can pull off the water pump. There's a pipe that goes from right here. This goes to the expansion tank. It's a hard, hard line. And there's also another uh, pipe that goes to the back. So you're gonna have to be very careful when you're pulling these off just to make sure that the O-rings come off and you don't damage anything else. But it's held in with mostly with 10 millimeter bolts. So start pulling them off. There's one. There's two. There's one on the bottom. The two on the top are longer. The one on the bottom is short. And there's one more on the side down here. And the one on the side is also short. And here is the last 10 millimeter bolt. So you have a total of five bolts, three that are smaller that go across the side and bottom, and two that go on the top that are the longest. Here are the five bolts. These two are the longest. These three are the other size. And it goes just like this. Now make sure you have the O-ring for this water pipe as well as this one. These two are the same size and you also need the, the O-ring for this one on the top. And that one's a little bit bigger than the other two. And the gasket for the water pump should come with a new water pump as well as the O-ring for the thermostat which comes with a new thermostat. This is a metal gasket for the water pump. Here's one of the O-rings for the water pipes. Here's the second one. And the third one. You can also replace the O-ring that goes inside of this water pipe. So you just have to pull this whole pipe out. So here's the new gasket. There's two little dowels on here that you can use to place the gasket on so it doesn't move around. And then what you want to do is make sure you already have all the new O-rings on and we're gonna end up uh, putting some silicon spray on the O-rings for the two water pipes. That way it's, it goes in there a lot easier. So make sure you have the right orientation. The thermostat side should be facing up. You wanna make sure that gasket's in place. And you wanna get this pipe in first and the back one you should be able to slide it onto it. Now here's the thermostat housing. So we're gonna pull out the thermostat first. The O-ring actually sits on the water pump. So here's the old thermostat. Now you wanna clean all of this up really well. And you put the new thermostat in. It just slides right in just like that. And the O-ring goes on the outside. Now you make sure you have all the surfaces nice and clean. Same with this one. This is where the water pipe will go. And then we're good to go. So make sure the O-ring's in the groove. 
Now you wanna make sure you have the right orientation. Now you've got this bracket and three bolts that are 10 millimeter and all the same size. Now with all of that back in place, make sure you clean up your pulleys. If any of them are bad, replace them. Uh, you don't want any coolant on there while you're you know, having the belts on, otherwise it's just gonna slip. So clean everything up as best as you can and then we can attach the upper and lower radiator hoses again. And you also wanna take off this cover off of the water pump so they just cover the threads and usually uh, what's gonna go on there is that clutch fan. Now we can put the water pump pulley on before we put the belt. There's two holes that are closer to each other and two that are further apart, so make sure you have them lined up properly. All right, so the upper radiator hose goes through this part of the shroud. Um, so you do have to have you know, the shroud in before you can hook up the hose completely. What some people like to do is they'll cut a slit out right here. So it's like cut a little section out. So you can remove this piece without removing the hose. So I do suggest doing that just because it makes it easier to pull out you know, the fan and everything if you ever have to without having to empty the cooling system. But for now, I mean, we're just gonna put it like this um, just because you know, I don't know how the owner would feel about that. But if it was my car, I would do that. This is the orientation where it's supposed to go. Now you can use silicon spray to make it easier to slide on. Especially for these two quick connects. We'll start out with the top radiator section. You should hear it clip in. And now we'll put this section in. And this just goes through the expansion tank. You should also hear that one clip in. Now we have the bleeder screw, which is loose since it is a new hose. We're gonna keep it off. Now when we refill it, we're just gonna keep filling until all the air starts coming out of here and we have a steady stream of coolant coming out. We can secure this hose clamp now. Now we're gonna plug in the lower aux fan switch. There we go. And now since we have all the radiator hoses and everything hooked up, we can start refilling the system from the expansion tank. Make sure you have your bleeder screw out and you kinda wanna have the front raised up so like, you know, teetering that way, it just makes it easier for all the air to come to the highest point in the system. So we're just gonna keep filling with the bleeder screw out. It should just keep flowing through until it starts overflowing from the bleeder screw. When it starts overflowing from here, you wanna keep filling until all you see is a steady stream of coolant uh, and water, obviously. It should be mixed together 50-50. You wanna see a steady stream coming out. If you're still seeing bubbles, just keep on topping up in there. And this is gonna be like, you know, filled all the way to the top. But you just keep on going and that's the easiest way to get all the air out. Once you've done all that, you can put the bleeder screw back on, close the cap, turn the car on, turn the heater on, let the heat, you know, start getting warm up in the car. And you might want to open up the bleeder screw one more time while the car is running to get the rest of the air out. And then after that, you want to let the car cool down all the way and double check the level in here. If it's overfilled, you can use like a turkey baster or something of that sort to take out any of the excess coolant. 
But yeah, that's just a quick and dirty way to bleed your cooling system. But make sure you're using BMW coolant or BMW approved coolant and you want to use distilled water. Do not use any of your normal tap water or mineral water. It has to be distilled. And that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. For more bleeding tips as far as bleeding the whole system, um, I did give a quick overview before, but here it is again. You want to make sure you get all of the air out before you even start, you know, start the car up. But once you have as much of the air out from the bleeder screw, there's only solid coolant coming out. Then what you can do is turn the car to ignition mode, put the heater on on the highest temperature and the lowest fan setting, and then you turn the car on. Now you're going to let the car get up to operating temperature. You can even rev it at about two to 3,000 RPM and just keep the rev solid. And you should start feeling some of the heat coming through the vents. Once you start feeling the heat coming through, or if, it's near, if there isn't any heat and you're already at operating temperature, then what you're going to have to do is go to the engine bay, loosen the bleeder screw about, one, about a quarter turn to a full turn uh, until you start seeing some air and some coolant coming out. You should see some of the air pop out as well as some of the coolant. And while that air is coming out, the heater should keep getting hotter. Once the heat is nice and hot, then you can close that bleeder screw all the way and you should be, you know, bled for the most part. But then what you want to do is check the coolant level once it's cooled down again and make sure that the coolant level is proper. If it's overfilled, go ahead and remove some of the coolant. If it's underfilled, go ahead and add some coolant. But if you guys want a full video guide on that, I do have a separate video on a non M E46, but the process is very similar. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you guys need any parts for any DIY repairs, feel free to get in touch with me at ShopLifeTV on Instagram, and I can source them for you. I can even send them out. Uh, usually, I like to stay local just because shipping pretty much kills the deal. I don't really have any shipping contracts since I don't you know, ship as much products as most of the bigger companies. But anyways, once again, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos.